Hey, so Merry Christmas. Today is December 28th, 2012, before year's end. Uh, before the year 2020, um, I wanted to have, you know, a really in-depth down rabbit hole talk with uh, Hess McCook uh, with the main topic, Bitcoin is a startup uh, in connection with uh, the presentation he had done a while ago, a 90 minutes presentation, which is split up in, in uh, you know, multiple parts. One of them is Bitcoin is a startup. And not only, you know, talk about this, but, you know, understand the bigger picture, the question why Bitcoin again, and what is the real precipice potential here with Bitcoin and, you know, go way beyond also the monetary, financial, economical perspective and potential, because it is the, the ultimate key route, uh, key solution to the um, unimaginably centralized structures we have on this planet. Uh, not only monetary, financial, economically, but also especially socially, structurally, scientifically, technologically, and spiritually. You know, we're all brainwashed, uh, so we all, you know, uh, got to go the, down the rabbit hole, understand first the, the, the root causes, the, the key causes of, of all the symptoms we have, of all the suffering, pain, inequality, and, and uh, insanity, and psychopathic things going on. So, yeah, Bitcoin is the key root. Uh, it, it will indeed uh, fix uh, the, the, you know, the structural problems first, um, and this is what we need. So, yeah, so in order to have, you know, prosperous, joyful, and, and evolutionary civilization, we need to start with the money, and that's why uh, we have Bitcoin. And it takes time, whatever time it takes, and patience, but we will get there eventually. So without further ado... This is my interview with Hasmi Cook. And by the way, if you are an ethical sponsor in connection with Bitcoin, offering service and products, please get in touch with me. Uh, write me uh, in email, email kd at kvandabani.com or hello at thetotalconnector.com. I really want to have an ethical sponsor who understands, comprehends, and values my precious work, my heart and soul and and time and uh, you know and energy I put into this work with it my podcast channels or YouTube channel and what have you. So give me a follow on Twitter, uh, social media, Telegram, what have you. And thank you so much. And wish you a good dive already into the new year 2020. It's going to be a very exciting year by order of magnitude. That's what I feel. All right. This is Kevin Davani, the Total Connector, signing off the Total Bitcoin Podcast. Uh, with Has McCook. Here you go. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast produced by the Total Connector. My name is Kevin Devani. My very, very special guest again, uh, my pleasure and honor is Has McCook from Australia. Has, how are you doing? Uh, sorry, I'm you know, good. got you up so late, but, you know, duties. No, no. We, we, were, we were hanging out, speaking on Telegram anyway. Might as well uh, get it on video and share it around. Share the love. Exactly. Share it. Um, so, Hess, um, I had the honor and the pleasure to read your raw, unfinished article. Um, it's such a great, it's sort of a, it's an ex post um, um, planned publication to your awesome a presentation which you gave, I think it was around November. Could it be? Yeah, mid, mid November. Yep. Yeah, it was called Bitcoin in 90 Minutes. I can really recommend and urge everyone to watch it. It's even split up in different parts from Act 1 to Act 5. Bitcoin, uh, especially the part where it says Bitcoin is startup. And this is the title and the topic of our, of our uh, discussion and talk today has so... Um, let me ask you something, Has before uh, before I give you the floor. What uh, the principal question? What I don't understand is, with all these intelligent, you know, risk reward outweighing venture capitalists out there, you know, all these you know really intelligent, experienced venture capitalists out there. Either I'm not seeing it. It's such, you know, they don't comprehend it. It's such a low profile. People or is it so independently? Like, is one waiting for the other is, is someone waiting to to for some for some other you know uh, parameters or conditions to take place in order to you know do the first mover uh, advantage you know like go into the first mover advantage uh, uh, action is uh, is something missing here because uh, 
the, I mean, the, the potential, the, the, because this is how I see venture capitalists, you know, way off risk and reward ratio. I mean, what is the risk and what is the potential? What is, what is the, you know, pro profitability, uh, uh, profit maximization um, potential here? And, and, you know, the growth factor that is, uh, you know, that you can calculate into the, uh, into the uh, uh, sort of the bigger picture of, of Bitcoin as a startup. So what you did, what I really loved, what I really loved is that you sort of, um, um, split this uh, the the phases of um let me just show this can i just show the chart the chart yeah sure all right so this is the chart and uh so you you sort of split it up into um very you know chronologically and logically uh with uh, with the uh, with the x and y axis i would call them um the price yep. and so basically so basically what this chart shows is uh it's a, a log chart of both uh, the price, which is that uh, very violent, volatile orange uh, line, and uh, the, the, the cream line is the, the hash rate as well. So that shows that sort of hash rate and, and price are always engaged uh, in a dance uh, together. And an increasing hash rate is a very big uh, 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 metric of uh, of success so when we get when we dig deeper into the concept of bitcoin as a company uh you'll see that a, a hash the hash rate and the hash rate growth is one of the one of the key metrics uh that you will use eventually for valuation as well and basically what i've uh, uh you know the the general theory uh is that every single uh halving reward era is like a fundraising round and what you typically see uh, you know, from uh, uh, from fundraising, you know, and the like, and you know, startup rounds, is you present investors with a product. You say, "This is our product. Uh, with your money, uh, we can go off and do all of this development, yada yada yada." And you know, by the time we're done, the company will be valued, you know, far higher. And you can either choose to, to reinvest in a further series or exit. Uh, or, or whatever that is. So uh, this is sort of a, a more of a demand side uh, framework, uh, which shows uh, price increasing in line with utility and utility uh, increasing in line uh, as, a, as a startup's utility would increase going from minimum viable product to, you know, a solid product to proven product. And then, you know, uh, ultimately a highly successful product. So that's uh, so that's the 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 crux of it. Mm -hmm. um, when I look at the chart, okay, um, let's say okay, we are around January two thousand twenty. Yep. Um, can you break uh, break this down a little bit? That uh, what I'm interested in this transit because it's here and now. You know that we got around December January twenty uh, uh, two uh, uh, thousand nineteen. Um, yep. And then we're going into January 2020. What I'm interested in now is the transition period. What are people? Yep. I mean, when they look at this chart or, or experience in venture capitalists or you know from the financial industry, what potential yep. would they see? What are, I mean, what are they? What would they be capable to see? What potential? Okay, so basically, what they've uh, what they've seen the main uh, the main areas uh, of potential is where the company was at at the start of the investment round and, uh, and what have the investors bought with their investment that has been drawn down. Uh, so in this era, uh, you know, that bubble, that big cash injection, uh, that allowed, you know, early developers, uh, you know, to, to divest a couple of their shares. Uh, you know, so they could work full time and increase the utility and all of that. So all of, all of that, uh, you know, runway, if you have a look at that, uh, little box in the, in the bottom right hand corner is the, you know, investment to utility life cycle. Uh, this era brought a lot of, uh, a lot of utility to the Bitcoin world. And that was shown, uh, obviously reflected in the price. So at the start of the era, 
uh, we were still fiddling around with the with the scaling question. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, you had, uh, uh, you know, some people were thinking we'll address, uh, you know, the scaling question with bigger blocks. Other people, you know, saying uh, with SegWit, you had SegWit 2x, there was a there was a bit of a, a quagmire and uh, its future was still uh, quite uncertain at that point in its in its lifetime. Uh, but through a through UASF, uh, that was a, a win on multiple fronts. So the the, the first win uh, was that it showed that uh, uh, Bitcoin was owned by the people. So the biggest giants and biggest players in the game effectively tried to uh, form a cartel, get together, and you know bend Bitcoin to their whim. And uh, Bitcoin was not bent. Uh, uh, and uh, and because of that, we we got SegWit, which unlocked uh, the the route to, to layer two scalability uh, with the Lightning Network. So this uh, this era has started with what's the question to the scalability problem? And all of this, you know, uh, uh, VC investment, let's say, has resulted in a in a system that now scales through the Lightning Network. Now, on top of that. Uh, you know, in the second era, we had BitPay pop up, right? But in the third era, we had BTC Pay Server went up. Yeah. So BTC paper on a, on a net basis is an increase in utility. Yeah, let's not, for, let's not uh, forget to mention, I mean, really a big applause to B BTC Pay Server as one of the, let's say, no, there are already a bunch of project open source. I just wanted to say it's a you know great open source project. This is, this is why I think what is the winning factor, I think, in all this project, it's open source. Yeah, I think it was uh, a bit, the Bitcoin company has a founder, but no CEO, <laughs> uh, volunteers, but no employees, exactly. and, uh, and provably non-diluting equity. Uh, with no waiting periods, none of that vesting, none of that garbage, provably non-dilutable equity. You can buy, you know, available to anyone uh, willing to trade their energy for it. Right. And that sounds like music in my ears in the fourth yeah. reward era, rise of the Bitcoin only industry and collapse of majority of altcoins, also called shitcoins. So this is a really... A positive uh, prospect yeah. and 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 it's and it's so going going back into the third era probably the biggest tragedy of the third era was uh was the scambrian explosion and you could say hundreds of thousands of hours of you know talented but misdirected uh, development hours was uh, was wasted on absolute garbage uh, uh, but you know, uh, with that said, it was the answer to the Bitcoin scaling solution, uh, the, the lightning network, which effectively made, uh, 99% of, you know, shit coins redundant. Uh, it'll just take a, a little bit more time. Uh, but in the next, uh, reward year, in the next four years, uh, there'll be several more, uh, nails in the, in the coffins, uh, uh, of old coins. And I think, uh, uh, most of them are dead uh, now. They just haven't really suffered uh, their, their ultimate liquidity death just yet. Uh, but as more exchanges start going, you know, the not, not just sort of Bitcoin only, but Bitcoin, I'll make concession. I'll make concessions. Bitcoin and a couple of the major shit coins, uh, as, uh, as they tend uh, towards that direction, I think, uh, uh, you know, sites like uh, CoinMarketCap will, uh, will go by the wayside and uh, none of these insignificant little coin projects were, will be heard of. Uh, well, yeah, let, let's go. Okay, let's, uh, let's stand still for a moment uh, because uh, I always have to think about Andreas Antonopoulos. Um, sort of, I mean, I love really, I love Andreas Antonopoulos, his, you know, his, his human rights approach, his diversity approach. Um, but I think the, the point I'm him trying to make is that um, he often reiterates his position that, you know, there should be sort of a multitude of, of, of you know, there should be one network, but many, uh, many, what, what did he say? Many blockchains or, or, or a lot of coins or something like that. So um, 
there's nothing wrong with that, but I think uh, it's uh, whatever we would call it in Austrian economics. This is the shelling point, the convergence point. So eventually, all these altcoins or other attempts to replicate something will go uh, through the convergence process on the side chain, liquid chain, or whatever second, third layer of the Bitcoin protocol. Uh, do I get it? Do we get this right or not? Look, I think uh, enough people have been uh, burnt in the past uh, with altcoins. So I'm hoping there's not another altcoin season. Uh, but with you know, regards to Andreas, look, if a, if a token or, or whatever the hell it is has a good uh, transparent value proposition for investors, mm -hmm. then, uh, then the investors and the market will decide. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm hopeful that the, the days of the dumb money uh, uh, you know, relatively behind us. So for example, in, in, you know, in, uh, in, during the series B fundraising round, I, uh, I expect, uh, uh, investors to be more, uh, targeted and aimed towards Bitcoin. Right. Right. And going back to your previous point that you made, um, about, you know, how many hours, <laughs> And t how much time and resources have been really wasted? But I mean, I you know that's life. It's it's a learning process. Literally hundreds and thousands of hours. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, I'm I'm just I'm just trying to think uh, the reverse question or the implied question within it uh, is that you know, like oh my gosh, you know, how far would we would we be if all these brains, if all these you know the resources, the time put into uh, whatever these, uh, I guess, you know, through all some of these processes, uh, the Bitcoin community that even maybe hopefully has even learned some something out of it. But um, I'm just thinking, you know, how, how much for, how much more advanced, how much more, you know, accelerated would that process be if the hundreds of thousands of hours would have been, I know, think, uh, I think the, uh, uh, not the 2017 bubble in terms of, you know, Bitcoin reaching 20 grand and drawing down, but I think the rise of the shit coins, the temporary rise of the shit coins, mm -hmm. I'd say put the industry back three years at least. Uh, Cause there are several, you know, well-meaning people that, you know, listen to their friend bought Cardano and they will never come back to crypto again. Yeah. They will, they will not get into Bitcoin until they absolutely need to. Uh, and you know, that, that, you know, uh, a lot of people got caught, got caught up in it. Like I, I used to preach, uh, you know, about Bitcoin and try to get everyone excited about Bitcoin 2013, 2014. So I was known as, as the Bitcoin guy. And, uh, during the 2017 bubble, I didn't get one question about Bitcoin. What do you think about Ethereum? What do you think about Gollum? Uh, what do you think about uh, uh, Verge? <laughs> I'm like, I don't even think about these coins at all. I've never even, I've never even heard of Verge. Uh, yeah. Right. See, that, so like, is, nobody touched Bitcoin. Yeah. And they got burnt hard, and they've just associated that experience. Uh, they'll when they come to like think about Bitcoin again, they'll just say, "No, it's going to crash," you know, ninety mm percent -hmm. or whatever it is. So uh, yeah. I think in terms of, in terms of stigma, uh, a lot, lot of weak hands were washed out, uh, that, uh, that won't, that probably won't come back in anytime soon. Everyone yeah. will end up coming back in. That's just how it works. <laughs> yeah. I guess uh, you see, uh, again, it's part, uh, must be, it must be part of the learning process for a lot of people unfortunately, really sadly. And, you know, a lot of us, even myself, you know, I mean, I've been in the whole so-called crypto space or blockchain space for like at least three, three and a half years. And a lot of us, you know, have been, who are now, you know, Bitcoin, who will call themselves Bitcoin maximalists or Bitcoin realists, as I call, my, as I call myself. Um, it's, it's part of the learning process. And I guess there's many of us uh, who've, lost hey, money who have lear learned the lessons and really become wiser and i guess it's part of the process but i'll, uh, I'll plug uh, i'll plug an old piece uh, i wrote uh, about uh, <laughs> just over a year ago another religious piece 
So uh, that was one of my early pieces about Bitcoin religion. And, uh, and this particular piece uh, spoke about the, the different kind of characters, religious characters that you're going to find uh, in the space. And, uh, and one of those characters uh, was the sufferer. Oh, right. And the, mm -hmm. and, the, mm -hmm. and the sufferer, just like in all religions, because we're all humans and we, and we all suffer. And, yeah. uh, you know, when we suffer, we, we turn to something. And uh, either we turn to something or we turn away from it when we're suffering. Exactly. So it can yeah. go one of two yeah. ways. So you can be a, so you can suffer and uh, you can reaffirm your strength. Or you suffer and you walk away. And, uh, and that's how people generally evolve. Uh, from shit coiner to either Bitcoin maxi or no coiner. Exactly. Yeah. But in order to go through that process has, um, you know, I am um, people, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, let's say, uh, pieces of the puzzle that, you know, it has to also have to do with the, uh, either we are low time preference thinker or high time preference thinker. And there can that's be one no salvation. There can be no salvation without cost. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. And so, you know, uh, so I think it's important for everyone to, to suffer through at least one, uh, at one least cycle one bear market. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Gotcha. If that doesn't strengthen the hand, like nothing will, it's the, it's Jedi training, basically. You sit through a through a bear market or even two, and uh, and that's it. You're a Jedi level Zen uh, master. <laughs> and you know what? What else uh, is somehow occupying my mind is that I've been thinking: Do people, um, general speaking, do do we understand? Uh, individually collectively how many people of us um do really understand the what's at stake here um and i think, I it's, uh, I think it's only the the most hardcore is it yeah it is it is um and um, what, what you know what makes what me we... sad you know what makes me sad has is that uh, why we are not able as a society, as a civilization to see what is the potential to, you know, to be able to gain more, to, to, uh, you know, to achieve more and, you know, to, 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 um, to, to grow more, uh, beyond what is, uh, what is possible in the short or, 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 or midterm. So this long-term thinking, I'm not sure whether this is, uh, whether, the, whether we have uh, somehow, we've been so dumped down or stupefied that we do not, and, and I'm talking about myself too, because it's a process to, to understand first, what is the root cause of, of everything, you know, we are striving for actually, or we are aspiring for. And that is, you know, starts with what we're actually talking about. I mean, what is this? Bitcoin is a startup. It means how do we invest as wise as possible in order to gain and to produce and to, you know, loop, uh, 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 profit as much as possible in the long term. And this is, I think there's a, there's a, there's a huge gap, uh, in, in, uh, when it comes to the comprehension, because I want, I was going to ask you like, how, wh wh what's going to happen after this sixth reward era IPO? Wh I mean, what phase are we then in the seventh, eighth or whatever? What, what, what are we talking about? This is, this is the most exciting right, so, part uh, of it. So seventh and eighth, you can even carry this further. So, uh, so you've IPO'd, your company's IPO'd. Uh, then after you IPO, the company, you know, spends a couple of years, you know, growing, you know, growing its, you know, uh, its product line, growing its utility, increasing in value as a company, uh, reducing its volatility profile. Uh, you know, from there, you know, becomes a, a blue, uh, a blue chip stock, uh, you know, talking eight, eight, ninth reward era, which is, you know, everyone goes to a blue chip stock, you know, it's the, you know, safest bet in the world, but it's not very volatile and it doesn't give, uh, you know, very good return. And this, uh, is probably like a, a, a conservative, like I may have even flattened out the curve a bit prematurely, but I don't like overselling things. Right. And really, I think it's in the, 
it's in the late fifth reward era where sort of all predictions uh, are off the table and uh, the era of this is good for Bitcoin kicks in. Mm -hmm. So late in this era, uh, thanks to things like SpaceX Starlink, so late in the fifth era, so we're talking uh, 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 late 2027. Right. So it's a, it's a decent way away. Uh, so by that time, uh, Starlink and its competitors will have 20,000 broadband satellites uh, in the sky. Uh, global internet penetration is going to be through the roof. <clears throat> global smartphone penetration is going to be through the roof. Uh, who knows what else uh, tech we're going to have that Bitcoin is going to piggyback off the back of. Uh, by that point, you know, the blockchain will still be like, like nothing. It'll still be like uh, maybe five or 600 gigs. Uh, if we're growing at, you know, a mega and a half every, every 10 minutes, assuming 24 seven full blocks. Uh, so yeah, late, late in that period, you could probably run a full node uh, for 50 bucks and have uh, uh, initial block sync less than a week. Yeah. Uh, so, so when this momentum starts to build just based, so for a VC, you say, this is your current customer base. Assume it's amount of people that have access to the internet and smartphones in the world. There's your customer base. So off the bat, you have a potential for customer base increase as you go, uh, as you go through the stages. So from here on out, it's basically whatever happens is a case of this is good for Bitcoin. Uh, economic turmoil and political turmoil, this is good for Bitcoin. Because all of a sudden people had zero, like Bitcoin was a zero utility proposition for them. It was just something nerds played with on the internet. Uh, but all of a sudden there's political turmoil, they need to get money out of a country. Bitcoin has utility. Uh, so everything that's going to happen uh, in the future is going to be a, either a uh, this is good for Bitcoin or a Bitcoin fixes this uh, type scenario. And uh, because tech grows on the exponential, it's it's so hard to predict like where the state of tech is going to be, you know, in three years, let alone seven. Right. Like seven years ago, our smartphones were garbage. Exactly. And yeah. seven years ago, you needed a PhD in computer science to toy around with Bitcoin. Yeah. And, and listen, Lass, I mean, uh, this is not about prediction. But a lot has I, changed in seven years. Yeah. I had a talk yesterday with Richard Myers from Global Mesh Labs. And after, you know, I had uh, some amazing talks also with uh, Randy Brito from Locho Mesh, uh, you know, uh, talking about local mesh networks. And, yep. you know, uh, uh, the point is becoming independent from the internet when it comes to Bitcoin transactions. And this is where I see... In, it might even not take years. It might take even six to twelve months until the, the technology is mature enough to have an you know a, a massive infrastructure built up to make Bitcoin transactions totally independent from the internet. I mean, this is my personal vision because once you are independent from internet, you know, countries like whatever Iran or other you know sanctioned or uh, oppressive regimes or hyperinflationary countries can can you know can finally, you know, develop their own uh, clusters of circular economies, totally independent from anything. I mean, this is like a dream come true. This is where the free market really is on crack, you know, it takes off. And then not to mention, you know, all the other technologies that will uh, eventually through this process of Bitcoinization or, or uh, free market economies, be, uh, based on the bit, uh, Bitcoin economy will eventually be disclosed and evolve and develop. And I think this is something people cannot imagine. And this is, uh, this is a problem I have with myself. Why have people such a hard time wrapping the mind around that this is already reality? It's, it's possible. You know what it is? You know what it is? It's the gaslighting. <laughs> it really is. It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, they tell you the falsehood so, so often and so hard that you just, you start questioning if you've gone crazy. Uh, you know, you start to think maybe I'm the only person in the world that, that thinks like this. And, uh, they, they, that's what, that's what 
politics and propaganda is all about effectively. Uh, and, and I think we've been successfully, you know, gaslit on, you know, some of us have, uh, have, you know, liberated our minds. Uh, but you know, the majority of the population, that's, uh, that's what they've been, uh, that's what's been beaten into them. And that's what they kind of just accept and, and acquiesce to, uh, if, if only they, if only they knew, uh, they can walk away today. Yeah. I don't blame them. I mean, you know, they don't have the time. They don't have the energy. They are occupied with, uh, you know, with personal existential problems, you know, loans and, and mortgages. And, and, but and with that said, when a, when an existential problem pops up, uh, that Bitcoin can solve, uh, Bitcoin's value proposition has increased. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, so that's the thing. It's all, it's all about utility. So all of the, like the utility, uh, functionality set is there, uh, you know, but for now, not everyone values the different elements of, of the toolkit. It's just like, you know, having, uh, uh, you know, a car with a, like a whole bunch of features, uh, but people are only worried about using one feature at the moment. Right. Uh, you know, they can't be bothered reading the instruction manual to see what these, you know, six other features are, uh, but one of these days they'll need a feature. They'll look up the instruction manual, figure out how it works and start using the feature. So, uh, so a lot of the stuff is there in Bitcoin. Some of the features are still a bit hard to use. Uh, but if you look at the, the start of this round and the end of this round, which hasn't even ended yet, like, uh, Casa Silva, for example, that's uh, two of three multi-sig for free. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. coming. If, yeah, uh, right. if you lose uh, your your password or whatever it is, and you need Casa to bail you out, uh, all right, they charge you point uh, one percent of your balance. Mm -hmm. Right. If you want to dodge that, you pay three hundred a year. Uh, but if you work it all out, uh, that unless you've got about three hundred grand worth, roll the dice, self-insure, and just use Casa exactly. Silver yeah. for free. Yeah, uh, and it's a wonderful service. I mean, because and, uh, and then, it's a you know user friendly plug and play. That that's that's the point. It's finally people don't have you know to uh, you know learn the con command control lines or something like that. Yeah, and so. there's a there's a lot of people. So like uh, you know the 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 numbers you know ten thousand dollars and blah 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 get you know thrown around a lot. But at least in Australia, uh, some of the people I know ten grand is nothing. Uh, for, for an investment that they're confident about and all that, people are happy to invest 10, 20, even $30,000. When your average house price in Sydney is a million bucks, mm -hmm. you know, 30 grand is like, is a, you know, 20, 30 grand fair investment. So like, you don't want to be stashing 20, 30 grand, you know, even on a single, even on a single device. Uh, and because these people, you know, they've got money, but they're unsophisticated. All I got to do is tell them just jump on Casa Silva mm -hmm. and like, don't worry about passwords. Don't worry about anything. Get yourself a password manager, get yourself a Trezor. It's seedless. Don't worry. Don't back up nothing. Exactly. Yeah. And if you hit the fan and you've only got 30 grand's worth in there, cough up 30 bucks and they'll bail you out. Yeah. And Or if you really want to uh, pay 300 bucks, mm -hmm. uh, but like effectively uh, you get a node hardware wallet, all this stuff, like Casa doesn't make money on you uh, effectively first year. I don't know how they made money on people the first year. Uh, if you send out a Faraday bag, a note in the hardware wallet, there's, there's 300 bucks there for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the Bitcoin world, you know, 30 grand can become 500 grand. Yeah. Like very quickly. And then yeah. like, you know, you're in the ecosystem and you can like, you know, upgrade yeah, your plan. That's a different ball game. Yeah, totally. And the Casa too, I think they're going to start delivering mid January. They postponed it uh, for some reasons to, to the Casa too. It's so really exciting. Casa product. Because, you know, they just happen to be doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, Unchained Capital has uh, two of three shared custody multi-sig and there'll be other, like, this is just how competition works. Like, uh, for example, like, uh, uh, my node now has their plug and play Bitcoin node, uh, you know, with open source software upgrades, all that kind of stuff. You've got novel, not all like, you know, 
you're just going to have where there's a good product, you're going to get new competitors into the space. So I've just, uh, I just use Casa now as the, as the example that's, that's front of mind. Uh, but you will, you will see more Casas in, uh, in series B uh, over the next four years. Uh, and other competitors too. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and other people that are aiming to sort of achieve a full stack yeah. of some sort. Mm hmm whether that's a, a full sovereignty stack, you know, which Casa is aiming to achieve or a full uh, mining stack, for example, like layer one is trying to achieve through, uh, you know, effectively being an energy utility that designs and fabricates mining chips and mines. So oh. there's like, you know, you've got a full uh, mining stack over there. So I, I can see, the next like the next series as would as you'd probably expect to see in a in a, a more consolidating market more focus and consolidation uh, mergers and acquisitions and the sort of the one stop like uh, bitcoin shops so for example you might imagine uh, an exchange uh, acquiring uh, someone like casa or casa uh, buying out like a small volume exchange and integrating that into their service so uh, let's say at casa you can uh, you can get your multi-sig you can do this you can do that and if you want you can buy bitcoin as well so there's a stack so right. purchase and you know multi-sig key management yeah node uh well that's that's what makes the the that's the common sense next step isn't it so it'll be effectively integrating horizontally uh, uh, vertically, you know, miners might even add to the stack by, uh, by establishing a, an OTC desk, uh, you know, to offload, uh, the stuff they've mined or whatever. Uh, but I do expect consolidation. Right. And the advantage would be non KYC because that's the next topic I want to talk to you about is I, I see there's a, you know, a lot of people say it's a huge problem. Uh, Giacomo Zucco, and it's 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 a real problem. There have been discussions on uh, uh, Marty Bent and Matt Odell's Tales of the Crypt uh, uh, after, you know, Trace Meyer talked about, oh, you shouldn't coin join because, you know, in the future they could trace you back to some yeah. terrorists in North Korea. You know, all this, uh, I don't know, it, it doesn't make sense, uh, but, but I mean, there should be a minimum requirement for and, 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 uh, and right, you know, to, to to coin join or whatever mix your coins in order to you know make your transactions as 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 private as possible or as as, as fungible as possible right yeah so look from What's what i know in uh, in many jurisdictions uh, there are ways to uh, to sell bitcoin kyc free in low amounts yeah and uh, I may be mistaken. We'll have to ask. I think Canada is is one such place, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, Bull Bitcoin offers such service, and I think all Bull Bitcoin payouts are coin joined by default as well. Uh, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't fix like you know the exit uh, problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but with that said, the 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 the, the you know peer to peer market is still growing uh, from strength to strength. Now, obviously, if you're you know, trying to uh, offload a million bucks uh, under the table, it might be a, a bit trickier, uh, but you know, the right connections will, will form in the right places. And where there's a need, uh, where there's a will, there's a way, things, uh, things will pop up. Uh, right. But I think, you know, living uh, in, the, in the times we live, uh, we live in now, uh, you know, thanks to the nature of the technology, they can't confiscate it. Uh, they can uh, they can make our lives uh, a bit tougher. Uh, so we're effectively uh, uh, racing the clock. So uh, the the higher in value Bitcoin gets, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the 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 higher the energy levels. As I, as I said in my in my passion of the believers piece. Now the energy levels is both you know the power used by the network, but also the the, the strength of the weaponry we have available to us. So if the price of Bitcoin is quite high, Bitcoiners will be quite influential. And, uh, and you know, uh, politicians can be bought quite easily. 
especially politicians that they themselves have invested in Bitcoin or their children have invested in Bitcoin. Yeah, that's like I can see, yeah. Like I can see why why they're scared and they're scared because governments are corrupt. Uh, but they shouldn't be scared for exactly that reason because governments are corrupt. Yeah, who makes the laws? I mean, you know, uh, people I think need to understand uh, who makes the laws, who, you know, who makes the drafts of the laws, who, you know, who 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 lobbies, who who exerts pressure and influence and real power on 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 the legislative process. And I think there's a lot of naivety, a lot of I don't know, uh, naive thinking uh, so look a great uh, example a great example is uh, is uh, in the states uh, you know, second amendment get enough weapons in enough hands good luck uh, everyone like talks about and scaremongers they're taking away your guns they're taking away your second amendment the second amendment will never be taken away there are too many guns in too many hands right right it, it's a you know uh and it's, it's the last fig leaf. Yeah. And it's the last so, fig leaf uh, has. So, I mean, how, how else are people going to defend themselves when the, when the nation states, the government, the regime uh, goes against its own people? Uh, you know, coerc with, coercion, with, aggression. With that, and, with, with, with that said, uh, because there are so many in so many hands, it is a political non starter. Sorry. You're not going to come out in America and say, I'm taking away your, your guns. And be even in a position to write that law. Right. Right. And eventually there'll be enough Satoshis in enough hands where if you come for the Satoshis, you won't be in a position to write that law. Right. Exactly. You won't make it into government. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, that's why the trick is to scale this thing quickly. And I think uh, with the rise of, uh, of, uh, of Bitcoin only and, uh, and the auto DCA movement, Mm -hmm. uh, and companies like uh, like Give Bitcoin, for example, right. that sort of uh, it's a great model, and, great uh, and model, yeah. I love it because it forces you, you, you know, if you don't learn about Bitcoin and you don't appreciate it, you're not getting this gift. Exactly, <laughs> it's locked. Yeah, it's locked up, and you have to, you know, the time and, and the energy to learn about it. Yeah, you've got to go through the course, and effectively, it's not it's not even that huge, and. Uh, Exactly. Yeah, uh, the the gift of conviction in Bitcoin is uh, is a lot more valuable than the than the gift of the underlying itself. Yeah, and uh, they have a you know a team, a, a board, a, what do you call it? Like a a, a a bunch of knowledgeable, ethical, highly you know uh, ethical people uh, as advisory board. You know, from whatever Safina Namus, Jan Pritzker. Are you part of the even uh, yes, like yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, but in a in a, in arm's length uh but uh but yeah in the always always talking to, always talking to Corey, they're a fantastic bunch yeah uh great great model yeah and i, I had him on model, yeah it's a great talk I with him model is, uh, i think their model is so great mm -hmm. uh there's gonna be there's gonna be copycats that that pop up in jurisdictions that they don't occupy uh because it's just you know, when you, when you hear about, you know, that system, a lot of people like entrepreneurs in this place would say, why didn't I think of that? That's, that's a great way to, you know, <laughs> uh, force people to take my mm -hmm. gift seriously. Because we've all given gifts to, to people in Bitcoin that they've either lost or, or whatever. So I think these, these little uh, movements, bit by bit, company by company, and, uh, and uh, you'll start seeing uh, Bitcoin spread into the hands of the many. Right. Um, I want to go just, um, again, as a, um, as a reminder, these KYC changes, it's a huge risk. I mean, it has, they got everything. I mean, they got uh, the privacy leakage risk and the data uh, leakage risk is extremely high in, in, in KYC um, exchanges. Don't you agree? I mean, they've got everything. They've got, they know everything. I mean, if, if this, if this data comes out, they know everything about each user. I mean, you know, the address, the passport scan, their, their, their utility bill. I mean, they've got everything. Isn't, isn't that con like concerning a little bit? Yeah, it is. It is concerning, but, uh, but what's it called? Uh, 
like uh, we're we're not here to play games. We're here to try to to shake up a system, right? And the 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 people that are bootstrapping uh, the revolution, we're exposing ourselves to these risks. Somebody's got to take that first risk. Uh, but eventually, like I'm saying, uh, you know, give it enough time, uh, and it'll be uh, it'll be untenable for a politician to act against Bitcoin. And, uh, and I think their window of opportunity is closing quite quickly. Yeah. So for example, what are they going to, they're going to throw everyone that's got Bitcoin in jail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mass cars, carceration, or I don't know, uh, FEMA camps. <laughs> Anyone that's ever made a, a site. So if you're to believe uh, Coinbase, apparently they've had 50 million signups or whatever it is, some dumb number. Uh, so what, anyone that's ever made an account, they're going to put us all in jail, all 100 million of us. Uh, Pandora's box is open. No, it's too late. The so cat is out the bag, as I say. Yeah. So obviously those 100 million accounts can be duplicate accounts, multiple people, this, this, that, but there's, there's millions of people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, best thing they can hope for is, you know, put in a, a, a clear, transparent, you know, uh, uh, fair uh you know taxation framework around it and uh and uh, what's it called uh you know you gotta you gotta bite the bullet and, and pay the local uh, capital gain tax that's what they that's what they gotta hope for so extracting you know tax income is more important than putting people in jail i would say yeah the senior raj yeah yeah, yeah. That's the ultimate battle, I think, you know, the senior Raj, giving up the senior Raj, uh, as you called, or tax uh, rent seeking model that's been practiced for, I don't know, for such a long, long time. Uh, that's going to be the ultimate battle. And um, yeah, uh, in the process it's of separa battle. separating money from state. Yeah, it's a battle and, and, and battles can be long and there can be a lot of attrition, but battles can be won. Uh, and I think uh, uh, in this case we've got it we've got it a bit backwards because uh, we've already won the war, uh, but now there's sort of uh, side skirmishes that we're fighting. I reckon it's done and won. Bitcoin has won the war. It is just uh, it's just not apparent yet. Word hasn't reached out to everyone yet. Yeah, and maybe it's supposed to be like that. So I'm well, always thinking. Still yeah. to, there's still time to pull a Rothschild and uh, and bet on the eventual result of the war. So, uh, so bet on Bitcoin and you're going to walk away clean. So as I see it, um, have you heard, the, um, uh, Germans, uh, are, are since recently have, are only allowed to the gold? buy the gold, uh, like up to 2000 uh, euros worth instead of 10 or 15, was it like yeah. 10 or 15,000, something like that? I think it used to be, yeah, it used to be, it's come down from, I think, five, and it used to be like 15. Yeah. Isn't that an obvious indicator that something is coming? I mean, something's coming and the experts are all, all agree who really know, you know, uh, who really comprehend what's going on and, and the insolvency and uh, with the negative rate interest policies. And, and the, the thing is, uh, effect. You know, like while America's rates aren't negative yet, yeah, I think they can keep kicking this can for a couple more years. Yeah, yeah, that's my question to you. I mean, how Maybe are, are general? Can, how how long can they, you know, inflate it? How how long can they, you know, pump up this balloon? I mean, that's that's a good question. Well, I reckon there's uh, because we're already now on the on the parabola with uh, with debt and whatnot. I reckon they can. Uh, there's probably two more parabolic years left in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause now it just, yeah, with all exponentials, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, a hundred, uh, a uh, hundred to a, a million, uh, or sorry, a hundred thousand to a, to a million is just the same as going from a, a million, uh, you know, to, to 10 million to you like, there's a, you know, the percentages stay the same, but the number just, woof. So the number is now at that point. Right. So like, uh, you know, the, the, I can't even remember what the, the the first bailout was. It wasn't even anywhere near a trillion. 
uh, uh, but it was still like, you know, today, three quarters, yeah, seven, eight hundred billion. 800 billion. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. 800 billion. And we all said, for 800 billion, uh, but like 800 billion, they now write it as 0 0.8 T. <laughs> It's nothing. <laughs> you oh know my. what I mean? It's nothing. Yeah. And it didn't take that long on the parabola, like, to get here. Uh, but yeah, as with all bubbles, they can pop at any minute. But I reckon they can keep the printers going at least till America hits zero interest. Yeah. And, and because time. the economy is doing all right in America. Yeah. Or, you know, the numbers seem all right, if you can believe the numbers. Like, you know, NASDAQ just hit 9,000 and all that. Jesus, yeah. It's totally overblown. The asset prices, stock price. I mean, who would buy these stocks at this moment? Is, is anybody buying all well, these overblown well, real estate? Interest, well, somebody's got to keep it pumping, and you can keep it pumping by dropping rates. Okay. Mm -hmm. But because they're not at zero already, they've got margin to drop. And I don't think zero has, is going to stop anyone anyway, as we've seen in Europe. So, There's some uh, mechanism I will never understand, but you know, because it's yeah, it's it's uh, the, you make a you make a system so complex that even the ones who who created the the holding structure, for example, this is the art right of tax evasion. You create this holding structure, you make it so complex. You look at you make it look so com complicated and complex that even the ones who created it don't even know how to solve the problem. So this well, is how you, you do well, it. You saw right. the other day, uh, Steve Mnuchin came out and said. You know, there's a trillion and a half US dollars. <laughs> we don't know where they are. They're somewhere, they're somewhere in vaults overseas. Right. What did he say? There's so many Benjamin Franklins because of the yeah. Benjamin Franklin picture or whatever yeah. on the on the dollar note. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so they can they can keep printing for as long as they want and, and a parallel economy has already, yeah. you know. Yeah. Formed. there's already you know one and a half trillion they can't find right uh not to mention the money laundering right. which they them do, doing themselves internally uh beginning with a uh treasury secretary but okay that's said uh but look uh, you know the thing that's why i said in in my in my piece in the in the passion of the believers and uh, i do call the moment uh, the last day you know, both as an allusion to, you know, judgment day and religions, but I also think it's all going to come to a head on the last day. One Monday morning, Deutsche Bank is going to wake up bankrupt and it'll all sort of domino from there. Unless, I don't know, like, you know, if America can bail out, like who knows what's going to happen. Uh, but one of these days, Deutsche Bank is going to wake up bankrupt, like Lehman Brothers woke up bankrupt. Yeah, and open then we'll see the real chain reaction, right? Sorry, guys, I mean, we're bankrupt, not open today. Oh, yet. my God. Oh, my God. And I'm really curious what's that going to, you know, what's the chain reaction? I mean, we are in the middle of European Union, I mean, Austria. So what is going to happen I mean, after that? Is uh, First of all, do you think England after Brexit is going to profit from all, from this uh, you know, from this isolation, uh, uh, in the short up. term, short in the term? short term, yeah, I think so. I think Trump will give Boris the win, and they'll mm -hmm. get a a U.S. U.K. bilateral trade agreement going, uh, so that you know, uh, so that Britain doesn't feel the the sting of losing some trade volume with the continent. Uh, but again, I I think about these things based on like setting up win-wins and you know, common sense so common sense would dictate uh you know boris and trump being being old boys and friends will probably try work out a deal with each other give each other some wins and publicity trump gets to go home and say you've got a trade deal and got jobs and <laughs> boris Johnson can go home and say you got a trade deal and you got jobs yeah timing is everything we'll, at the right time we'll yeah probably, we'll probably work something out uh so yeah, I'm more I'm more worried about the continent. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Continental Europe, uh, or just you know uh, the, the countries under under the euro, the euro currency. So I think the euro is a is in a is in a dubious uh, position. But again, the 
it doesn't look like zero has stopped them. So it looks like they're planning on, on kicking the can. Mm -hmm. so we'll just have to see how long they can keep doing that for. Exactly. So uh, the, longer the better, to be honest, the, the more time Bitcoin has for a soft landing, uh, the yeah. better. Yeah, I totally. Yeah. I mean, with all my impatience, I get it. I get it. Um, let me, let me go back to your, um, chart, uh, um, okay. I'm, I'm on your YouTube channel right now. It's, uh, ask me cook, by the way, you should check it out. Ask me cook. It's, you can either watch it as a total 90 minutes in total or in from act one to, uh, to five, but this one is really fast and Bitcoin is a startup. Uh, on your chart, there's never a mention of the stock to flow ratio or anything like that. Is that on purpose? Yeah. Yes. Can you explain? So, uh, so, uh, so look, I'm okay with the stock to flow ratio. I like it. I like the theory. I like the maths. I like the statistics. Uh, but for it's me, controversial. I'm, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, it's not controversial, but it is, uh, obviously it's a supply side framework. Uh, but that said, the, the nature of Bitcoin supply is one of the big sources of demand for Bitcoin. It's because it's got a scarce supply. Right. Uh, but I think the thing that makes Bitcoin shoot is utility. And demand. Right? No, yeah. just general utility. So yeah, let's, chill, say, yeah. uh, let's say, uh, you know, blocks are, blocks are full 24-7 and we activated SegWit. All of a sudden, Bitcoin has 30% more utility. Wow. There are 30% more transactions going through. Mm -hmm. You know, we, uh, you know, uh, uh, made, you know, multi-sig easy. People needed multi-sig. They now have a product. Bitcoin gained utility. Uh, Bitcoin became easier to use, gained utility. Because it was easier to use, more people came. Utility, price increases. Price increases, people see the price increase and they pile in. Mania happens. Early holders sell out and go develop full time or invest in startups. Uh, yeah. You know, product becomes easier to use or better to use. More people come to use it and just goes on it's and on. It's hyper cycle, hyper wave cycle, yeah, whatever we call it. Bitcoin yeah. never improves. Mm -hmm. Like, is scarcity alone enough to shoot it to the moon? Uh, for me, no. Uh, it needs its, its other utility as well. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and strengthening of its inherent utility. Uh, so, you know, censorship resistance, you know, it's inherently censorship resistant because no one can confiscate it uh, 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 from you. But you can make it even more censorship resistant for things like CoinJoin. CoinJoin, utility. Uh, so did you have any of like, and if you think about it, like it's, it's so new and none of this utility was around when we were scraping the bottom of the barrel at 3,500 us, like lightning was just starting. So no one had really felt the utility. Uh, the plug and play node movement was just starting. So no one felt the utility. Uh, Wasabi was like just kicking into gear, uh, partially signed Bitcoin. Like a lot of utility has come online, uh, you know, in the past year and, uh, you know, Bitcoin's up in price a hundred percent this year. I say Bitcoin is up a hundred percent in utility this year. Totally. Yeah. And by the way, before I forget, um, you know, I'm also excited about a shout out to uh, Samurai Wallet Whirlpool coin mixing yep. because they're working right. I don't know how far they are in the process of uh, implementing it but um, they're working on it really hard uh, the, by default automatic coin mixing in the mobile wallet itself of Samurai that'd yeah. be awesome I mean this is what I think a lot of people are waiting for because it's and, you know, user and, friendly uh, again and intuitive <laughs> and what money is Samurai making right it's almost volunteer work exactly yeah right yeah. so unless you have those startup injections and the early holders just can sell something so they can live for a couple of years and, right. and work. Totally, yeah. Uh, but, but the work these guys, the utility they add to Bitcoin, whatever Bitcoin they're holding, like that's going to increase in value. Uh, and this is just like uh, equity holders in a startup. 
right? A lot of them, you know, they, they get equity in the company. They work extra hard because they've got equity in the company, uh, you know, so their success and the success of their company also mm -hmm. leads to the success of their stock. Yeah. But we're all, you know, employees. It's a natural in incentivization. I mean, it's got to be. I mean, otherwise, how are people going to be motivated, incentivized and, you know, make, make their existential living also? You know, I mean, it's about, you know, getting some joy and pleasure out of what you're doing. Not just that. You look at any startup, it's the, you know, the founders and first employees that have the most equity. They got the most at stake. They got to put in the sweat, you know, to build everything out. And, you know, more employees come on. And the, the beautiful thing is the employees can buy more shares anytime they want and sell them whenever they want. Right. That's the, that's the different. And they don't, and they don't have a boss either. They're their own boss. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. They got coworkers, uh, but these coworkers don't have a, don't have a shared boss. They have a, they have an understanding between each other. So that's why you can't totally, compare Bitcoin to a startup, uh, but a VC looking at that framework uh, can see the trajectory of where Bitcoin is going. Uh, and I'd say if they truly appreciate and understand the framework, they probably will not invest in any Bitcoin companies. They will simply invest in the underlying. Right. So Bitcoin, like orange coin. Of Bitcoin, it'll, it'll have enough of a risk to reward ratio that you don't need to go full risk and invest in a Bitcoin startup, uh, mm -hmm. which is you know, unlikely. Or you can invest in a Bitcoin startup and you can hedge this investment with an investment in the underlying. So you've got mm -hmm. an exposure to Bitcoin, but if your startup fails, you still got your Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But that might be something, you know, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, that VCs start to consider uh, because as an underlying in its, in its own right, uh, you could treat it as something with with similar uh, uh, return uh, multiples as you know investing. So, for example, if uh, in in my article that I'll uh, publish and in the and in the in infographic, you'll see uh, pre money valuation at the start of the round, money in, and post money valuation end of the round. Money in is impossible to know. Uh, I've given it like a a, a sort of a minimum. A conservative guess. So uh, for me, and like in, you know, in my documented economics and, and research, uh, you know, Bitcoin mining mirrors a, a perfect, perfectly competitive environment. So in the long term, on average, cost to mine a coin is about the price to mine a coin. Uh, so we can say that the revenue that the miners earn is effectively what the miners invested in Bitcoin. And that's, you know, the investment that counts. And uh, in the in the past difficulty cycle, uh, we got uh, you know money in of uh, of five billion dollars. Uh, so the mining fees up until this point in this era, it's either five billion US or six billion US, something in that area. Uh, but we started the 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 round at eleven billion market cap, and right now we're sitting at one hundred and thirty. So for you know for five billion. Uh, or 6 billion money in the valuation, the market cap went up 90 billion or 10 X. If you go back to series B, uh, starting uh, market cap was a billion ending market cap was 11 billion. And, uh, and uh, you know, money in wasn't much. It was like 600 million bucks, 0.6 uh, billion. So an investment of, you know, about 50% of the starting market cap, again, resulted in a 10 to 11 X uh, uh, rise on the series. So every single series has pretty much been 10 Xing uh, with a 50% investment of the, of the pre money. So that's, that's amazing for, for any startup you invest in to get a right. 10 X, uh, you know, return. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the valuation in, in, uh, at, at the IPO phase? you know, in, on that chart, where, where do you see it? Uh... Well, so IPO phase at that point, uh, it'll be like, you can pick up Bitcoin from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like your bank will also be a Bitcoin broker. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So let me see what year that is again. 
So yeah, 2028, 2030. So in about mm-hmm. 10 years. And, you know, like if banks aren't stocking Bitcoin in 10 years time, uh, that means Bitcoin is dead at that point. Because if Bitcoin lives for another 10 years, uh, banks, there'll be a bank that buys Casa or that buys Zappo. Probably not Casa. Casa probably doesn't have that great uh, security as, you know, the, the big, big, big custodians that like a bank would be willing to pay $10 billion to acquire. And then the bank just offers Bitcoin custody and they'll slug your bank level fees yeah. and rich people will be happy to pay because they trust the bank. Exactly. Yeah. It's a natural process. And I, I know and it makes more and more sense to me. There's so many people out there that just will well, need, I will think. just really need the multi-sig, uh, uh, multi whatever, sig custodial. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's, that's why when I say IPO, it'll just, it'll be everywhere and also nowhere. So you'll be using it and you just don't know you're using it. Just like, you know, a lot of, a lot of tech these days. So by IPO phase, like even lightning might be buried deep under like several layers. Like there could be like layer four or layer five at that point. We're already looking now at at layer three, uh, you know, apps on top of lightning. So there might be, you know, apps on top of apps on top of lightning. Uh, so like I'd say by that point, like you won't be tra- like uh, regular people not transacting on chain. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So what is really, again, uh, I have to say that as a concluding remark of mine is um, for me, you know, the most exciting part of Bitcoin is what comes after that. Because for me, it's just a natural cycle and process you know, with Bitcoin as a startup, you know, as a sub chapter, but what can, what is, what, what do we do with it? What happens to people? What happens to society? What happens to the technologies that are in the closet that have been suppressed that are, you know, not mainstream that are uh, seized, confiscated, or just patented and not been able, but I see this, uh, you know, I see this as a huge precipice of opportunity for Bitcoin to lay the healthy, logical, sustainable, and really uh, prosperous foundation soil groundwork for developing all these technologies that are in the closet think, that we can't even imagine that are that exist. So, yeah, I think there's just going to be a, a, a beautiful virtuous loop. Uh, yeah. Bitcoin will piggyback off technologies yeah. and uh, people will just figure out like uh, new ways to use it. Like I said, uh, just through the simple act of internet broadband internet internet uh, satellites in the year 20. So I think SpaceX's constellation project is finished by 2027. Yeah. Which, uh, I mean, it's still for me a primitive technology It has uh, the space because it's still on burning fuel. And uh, since we have, I mean, I I know it's, uh, people have a hard time wrapping their heads around the notion that we have lost at least 100 years of technology of real scientific technological evolution. So I think it's time we leave this burning fuel, the so-called fossil burning fuels behind us, which is by the way, not fossil because regenerates itself. Russian scientists proved that many decades ago, but you know, it's, uh, you can't talk about that. But anyway, you know, I see a totally new comfortable life for society coming up. And Bitcoin is just a tool. It's the monetary, economical, financial facilitate, facilitator tool in order to achieve this new paradigm shift. I think, uh, I think it's being nice now and uh, doing facilitation now. Uh, but Bitcoin uh, will impose its will. Yeah. Soon enough. So uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of bite in Bitcoin. Uh, so I think... Uh, I think the battle's been won. The foundations have uh, been laid. The, the the infrastructure is currently being built. Uh, now it's uh, it's the waiting game. It's uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, so you can you can take the passive waiting game approach, or you can uh, or you can get more guns into more hands. So I'm uh, I'm trying to get the the, the guns out. Uh, and I think uh, yeah. Uh, like I said uh, in the in the in my religious pieces, 
uh, Bitcoin is the natural way and, uh, and uh, it'll force things back uh, to the natural way because uh, uh, what's happening now definitely is, uh, is unnatural. Uh, no one, uh, no one uh, would be born free and with a, with a free mind uh, would, would accept uh, today's status quo. Uh, because it's uh, it's it's not the natural thing uh, uh, to accept. So I think Bitcoin will put everything back on the natural way. So uh, Bitcoin fixes this indeed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it'll, uh, it'll it'll squeeze every single little bit of inefficiency out of the market. So it's it's got bite. It's going to be uh, relentless towards the inefficient. So uh, uh, all technology that's been kept from us. Uh, will be will be unlocked through the through the virtuous cycle of Bitcoin piggybacking on technology. Everything is good for Bitcoin. As uh, I hope to see you um, in in around uh, beginning of March uh, during the Valor Bitcoin Conference in Vienna, people should check out the, not only yours but some other people uh, you know uh, uh, amazing people who have written articles in. Uh, Bitcoin Times is it by uh, yeah uh, edit uh, what do you call it a producer um, uh, published by Alex Svetsky. Uh, yeah, there's, there's one by Chantel. So there's there's myself, Nick Carter, Gigi, Dan Held, Robert Breedlove, Rory. Oh, I'm forgetting someone for sure. Uh, Rory, yeah, Alex Rory. himself, of course. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's all eight of us, I think. Mm -hmm. Connor, Connor, Connor Brown. Well. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, yeah, so really yes, amazing uh, pieces. You should you should definitely read them. It's amazing, it's, amazingly uh, written and and super like down the rabbit hole. It gives you you know such a bigger picture of of uh, finally getting to the question why Bitcoin. You know, it's it's. Uh, and uh, and look, if you if you're not much of a reader, uh, Guy Swan has already uh, has already gotten down to business and uh, and started uh, started with a couple of narrations or he's, he's, he's done uh, he's done mine mm -hmm. i think he's done uh, rob's as well robert breedlove Rob, yeah yeah uh, and i'm sure uh, i'm sure we'll hear his uh, audible chocolate voice uh, with the with the rest of the ones coming uh, coming soon great <laughs> So any other um, information or sources? Uh, let me, okay, your YouTube channel again is Has McCook. Uh, do you have any other sources besides Twitter handle? Yeah, so Twitter, I've got my Medium page. So it's just medium.com slash at Has McCook. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Twitter, you can hit me up at Friar Has. <laughs> Bringing that, the preaching, preaching the strong method, preaching the strong word of, uh, of Satoshi, lifting spirits. Yeah, and That's I would funny. still love to see that presentation you did in that orange, uh, what do you call uh, it, yeah. gown or something? No, that, one, uh, that one was uh, live, live show only. You had to be there in person. <laughs> but that was in Australia, right? So, yeah, yes, yes, uh, unfortunate for us. So, uh, if there are any Aussies watching this, come roll on down to Sydney, bitcoinsydney.org. Uh, oh, I would uh, love to. Uh, post meetups uh, <laughs> once a month. Uh, we might even start the... Uh, Bitcoin Socratic seminar forum, which will uh, get super deep and technical and uh, probably run that once a quarter as well. So uh, yeah, big, uh, big year for Bitcoin in Sydney coming up this year. Looking forward to it. Wow. You guys are really on top of everything now with Stephen Levera and so many others um, in Australia. You guys are really, um, I wish, I wish we had a little bit more oomph and, you know, action and, uh, in Austria or wherever it's, it's unfortunately a little bit too passive, but you know, people got to wake up, people got to go through this process and feel the pain points and really start being curious and open-minded like a little child. So we got a long way to go. Anyway. Um, thank you so much for this special episode and session with you Ass, and have a good dive into the new year, 2020. Likewise. And to all, all and all your all your listeners, happy holidays and uh, happy new year to you guys as well too. All right, that was totally right. fun. Bye bye. Thanks.